right, so 360 says, Curious guys, how do you deal with these types of situations? I've never dealt with a block of any kind until this year. There will be times that I just look at the screen and end up just putting my computer to sleep. Not selling anything adds to it as well since that what's the point feeling creeps in. But mostly it's just straight up producer's block. Uh, okay, so uh, what are your guys' thoughts on producer's block? How do you guys deal with uh, producer's block? Man. Okay. Go ahead. I have, I have a lot to say. Okay. I, I, gotta, I gotta gather it all together real quick. <laughs> okay, well, one of the uh, ways that I deal with uh, producer's block is um, uh, what I'll do is I'll get like a loop of uh, anything, a lead or or arpeggiated loop or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I would probably try to make something around it and, and make it into like its own uh instrumental then i'll take out the loop and see if the, the actual instrumental can stay on its own and sometimes for me that you know gives inspiration or you know sometimes i just pretty much just shut down uh reason i just shut it down and just go do something else completely different like uh you know watch a movie or i don't know like just go outside take a walk and just leave it for a couple days or so or sometimes what I do is I go to like some of my old beats and you know listening to them again like for the first time if I haven't listened to it say for like uh, two months or something I go back and I listen to like an old beat it's like again like a new set of inspiration if you get what I'm saying mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it, it's you know I always find something in it that, that I didn't hear before and it's like hey well that sounds cool and then from there now sometimes I may actually go back into that old beat and take out like uh, a particular lead or a particular instrument that I use and make something fresh so those are like just a couple ways that I deal with it sometimes but then there are other times where you know I just have to just leave it alone just leave it for a couple days let my ears rest you know just gather my thoughts and then come back and then sometimes I would knock out like three or five beats in like a day or two days and it's like whoa so that's yeah, pretty much how I cool. deal with it sometimes yeah yeah, it's very cyclical, like exactly what you were saying. You gotta give it time. You can't really like force, you can't force your creativity in the end. I mean, as producers, we have many, we have to wear many different hats. And sometimes we're trying to do all sorts of different types of genres or trying to, we kind of overwhelm ourselves. And most of the time it's because we don't really have a clear path. There's no deadline we're working on because for a lot of us, this is just a personal kind of creative venture and we want to get the most out of it for us in the end. We want to enjoy that. But I think some of the stuff that I've tried to do is just break it up into processes, take breaks like Pixel was saying. You definitely got to take time away. It's like these past couple of weeks, I've been going through a bunch of my older projects from like two years ago and seeing the potential and kind of some of them I'm like, man, I wish I could still write stuff like this. Mm-hmm. But it's cool to go back to that because regardless, yeah. two years from like, from that point, you're going to have more skills so you're gonna be able to add to that don't think because you posted the beat on soundcloud it got released like it was a big kanye album yeah kanye couldn't go back to an old album and remake something i don't know maybe yeah. maybe he could but like yeah. we're whereas producers we're i mean don't get too romantic about your your projects like release them that, get the feedback go back and then you know do whatever right that's a that's a good point um that you can if you get burnt out of a project oh wow, there's a lot of noise someone's making it <laughs> Uh, if you get burnt out of a project um you can always just you know bounce it out and uh like save it for later or something you know and then you can come back to it uh and maybe you'll make something out of it maybe you won't but also i think um something that really at least helps me is learning so uh i think a lot of people just get lazy and they don't want to learn but like there's so much to learn so like if you're if you're not learning you're basically like saying you're a know-it-all which is kind of bs because everyone has room to learn but um like if even if you're like a like you're the best at like programming synths and stuff then uh you, like maybe you're not so good with music theory so then start learning some music theory and stuff and then maybe you'll stumble upon like this cool like chord progression that you never really uh came across before or maybe if you're good with music theory maybe you know you delve a little bit more into like sound design or, or like synthesis and then you'll discover like sounds that you've never heard before which will make you want to do certain things that you never thought of sound design is huge nice. yeah so so you know like 
find your find areas where you maybe you're not so knowledgeable in uh in sound and music and then learn like in experiment and then um you know the the more you learn the more like stuff you'll uh be inspired by so yeah no i like that yeah. definitely it's inspiring to learn something new and then kind of along that same vein is also just getting some new sounds like a new drum kit a right. new set of you know whatever whatever using silent or or massive or whatever it is getting some new sounds in there can really be inspiring um you know sort of on a practical side and then i think sort of on the the mindset side i think what you guys have all touched on is true is where it's cyclical and and the longer I've been doing this, the less it bothers me where, you know, maybe years ago where I'd go through a period where I'm not feeling creative, I'm not feeling like I'm making my best stuff or whatever. And I'd be like scared, like, oh man, I lost it. I, I don't know how to produce anymore. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and now, yeah. but once you've done it a few times, you've been through yeah. that cycle and you've been on fire for a while. And then it's yeah. been, you know, a period of time where it's not going so well, you learn to relax into it. And actually it's yeah. almost like a mind trick by relaxing about uh -huh. it you'll probably get out of it a little bit quicker because you won't be stressed right. because it becomes yeah. a cycle where you're stressed about it and then you can't do it and then you're stressed even more and yeah. so it, you know it kind of yeah, don't be too hard on yourself guys for sure and also i think you know like when you relax like also just be relaxed about um you know losing work or giving up work or deleting work because like you should, I think you should be willing to scrap stuff, you know, and then um, just move on to the next thing. So like, um, you know, like a lot of, you know, great writers or whatever, you know, they, they, they will write, you know, a hundred things and then they'll like weed that down to like 10 and then they'll weed that down to, you know, like the best three and then they'll pick the best one or whatever. So it's kind of like that sometimes where it's like, you know, you might start a project and like sometimes you just have to admit, hey, it's not really that good. So, you, you know, just like let it go. And then that way you're not holding yourself back from moving on to the next project. Yeah. Because uh, I think a lot of people do that. It's like they think they have to finish that project. And maybe they just aren't inspired by that project. So instead of holding True. yourself back like that, I think you need to like let go so that you can move on to the next project where you will be inspired. You know, I think, right. yeah, I think people just get caught up like they have to finish like this project or whatever even when they're not totally not even feeling it you know yeah it kind of goes back to like being you know too romantic about your projects like i know one thing i've always i used to think it was a struggle more so than anything was i could never finish a track well then i started finishing tracks but i would still just get bored of them so quickly and i, I was like why can't i just focus on this one thing well eventually it developed into me working on a batch of like five or six tracks that I'm cycling in between yeah. and maybe they'll have like you know one time one or two times it'll just be a total botch and I'll just end up deleting it anyway or it just gets yeah. disappeared in the archives but by continuing to like stimulate your mind by giving it new because what you're taking in is like the sound that's material going in your brain it's exhausting like if you listen yeah. to the same loop for an hour oh, yeah. that can actually be mentally exhausting you oh, don't no, think it, it is yeah. just because it's sound but right, you'd be right. surprised I don't know yeah. the science on it but oh, that definitely no, has sure. a ton to do with it yeah and it just it starts to sound kind of lame you know it no matter what you listen to if you just listen to it over and over again like the dopest thing in the whole world if you just listen to like you know like a like five second loop over and over and over again or whatever you <laughs> yeah know, it's, like, you're gonna you get burnt out <laughs> you're just gonna get a loop of happy yeah. from pharrell yeah like, oh, as good as that <laughs> song is the first like yeah. four bars if you listen to that straight for an hour i guarantee you'll hate that song <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, but it works with anything too i mean it's like yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, um, you know, you can turn a fan on, and then if, you know, you have your fan going for an hour, you just kind of tune it out in the back of your head. Because, <laughs> yeah, your mind, when it hears something that's uh, repetitive and repeats over and over again, uh, like, it just naturally will tune it out. So, uh, in that sense, when you listen to the same loop over and over again, like, it just kind of becomes boring, you know, uh, no matter how exciting it actually is. But because, because you're so familiar with it and it's so repetitive, um, your your brain kind of uh, tunes it out a little bit. You know, um, what, I, what I can add to that too is that, you know, sometimes, just like you're saying, you know, you're just tired. And if, if, you, if you stay on a project for too long, like, it may be good, yes, but if you stay on a project too long and you try to make this thing perfect, you know, like perfect, perfect, and try to get the perfect drums. I mean, nothing is wrong trying to get the right tone, the right sound, whatever. But if you stay on a project for way too long, like four weeks, five weeks, oh, and yeah. you're doing that constantly, right. you know, it, it would 
you know send you into maybe a sort of depression or just that, like, yeah that is a really good point yeah too many yeah. there's too many people that are like over perfectionist you know like everything has to be absolutely perfect you know yeah no i can get caught up in that too and i think what yeah. can help with that is you know i might look at like okay cool i've got a cool loop now i have to figure out how to arrange it and maybe change the snare and change all yeah. this stuff to make right. it perfect because i yeah. eat almost the opposite problem where like i see the potential there but right. the way that i've kind of worked around it is like you know what let me get let me get like a rough draft let me just finish it right, even if it's rough right. then i can always oh, come yeah. back and and 99 oh, yeah. percent of the time that rough draft is like oh no it sounds good that uh, sounds that's a great good idea. Yeah. you know and so it's again right. it's almost like a little bit of a right. mind trick where it it, it takes that yeah. romant, you know romanticizing out right. of it. it's like okay let me just let me just knock this out let me just finish this up um and then yeah. i was going to say also as far as like some uh practical things to do is just get inspiration from other songs and and you could go as far as like really copying things like i i do yeah. it all the time like i'll listen to something um and maybe i like the drums and then i'll, uh -huh. I'll just take the time to remake those drums like as close mm -hmm. as i can this is a trick i do all the time and, and nobody <laughs> and if you put something completely different yeah. and then maybe even listen to a different song and then kind of right. model after like i like the instrumentation in this song yeah. and then different song yeah. i like the chord changes yeah. in the song and all you're doing is, is basically talking copying the vibe stuff, right. but it sounds the vibe, but... yeah but it's going to sound completely different yeah. because you right. have these combinations of these different things um and and it's just also a good exercise to do because then if you practice you know analyzing this other music of kind of how they did it oh yeah it's right. a good learning process just like yeah. austin you were talking about of, of that learning process that's another yeah. good kind of and then that's in your head you know that's in your head from from now on basically you know exactly yeah just like how you would like you know if you're referenced in a mix you're, you're not trying to make it sound like the mix but you're trying to reference it to get in the same ballpark so yeah that's something that i do too you know like listen to like watch or watch other producers and gain inspiration from them and they may have like something I like and then I'm like okay let me try to make something similar to that and you know work from there do you guys yeah. think your your best projects were the ones that you took like the least amount of time on <laughs> I don't think that but I've heard you know <laughs> other people say that actually so that's it's no like, I, I feel that people, it's always the yeah. other people that like it's like the best received yeah. the best received I yeah. should say like sometimes the ones yeah, the you're ones iffy I about don't... Yeah, that I don't even really like that much. Like, I think like, oh, that was kind of a crappy beat that I made. But like, I, you know, it's just like, whatever. I just put it up and then people are like, whoa, this is the dopest thing ever. You know, like, I hate like, that. I love it and I hate it. that. I, yeah, I love it and I hate it. It's, it's like, like I love that they like it, but. It's like, sometimes you think your best work is like, yo, this beat is the craziest. This is the dopest. And then someone yeah. else will come and like some, your, your least favorite beat. They come and mm. they're like, this is dope. This is crazy. And you're yeah, like, yeah. what? Are you yeah, serious? It still happens and, to me. And, the one that, and the one that you think is your dopest, they're like, man, it's okay or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually, that's yeah, that another just happened good thing to me remember recently. too. What? Oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, basically, I've, I had this beat. It was a sample beat because I always sent my buddy who was real into like sample based, like New York hip hop, real goon with all that stuff. And every time I send him like something that's, you know, basically software sense and a lot of processing and hours and hours spent on an 808 or like mm -hmm. a brass sound he always feels the the sample beat that you know was just pretty much a nicely chopped sample with some drums layered over it mm -hmm. you know it's, it's yeah, just yeah. perceived different right yeah yeah and i was just gonna <laughs> it's say like, it's why a good did i spend all that time on that it's a good thing to remember you know if you are getting that producer's block and you're worrying about it being perfect and being the one that everyone's uh, gonna love is oh yeah <laughs> it, it's hard to control anyways half the time like we're saying it's, it's yeah, not the it, one you think is that dope anyways yeah. so just finish what you're working on and then work on the next or you know yeah. don't worry about it so much yeah just keep it moving i definitely agree put it out there get feedback man <laughs> right yeah basically yeah you just can't worry uh worry too much um about it so uh you know yeah, well, nothing's perfect so yeah, one more thing too that helps um, for me is working with other people. So, because oh, you get yeah. the inspiration from somebody else, you yeah. can say, hey, you know, why don't you start something? Yeah. That is the best that. thing, I think. That is true. And that's a good way to uh, utilize um, your work. Like, if, if you were really inspired, for, you know, for like 30 minutes and you put something together, it's really cool, but then you lost your inspiration and for some reason you can't get it back, you can always, you know, maybe send it to some other people who uh, might want to collab with you. And then, right. And then, yeah. The, there you go. Collabs are really good for for really everyone um, because you uh, kind of add each other's audiences and um, I mean, plus I mean the project that would normally just be thrown in the trash is like finished. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and if you know yeah. people around you that like make music, maybe you don't know them. You went to high school with them or acquaintances. 
like reach out to them. I, I was scared about that until I actually did it. And but once you get together with that person, you might not have known them or whatever, but they make uh -huh. music, you make music, no matter what. Just it doesn't even have to be someone you previously knew. Just any collaboration opportunity that you can meet up in person, I think, is the most invaluable. Because no matter what, I think you'll both get both parties will get beneficial like benefits out of yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. And it doesn't even have to be another producer. It could be somebody you know who plays guitar or, or you know, whatever yeah. instrument. And that can inspire you in a new way. Oh, right. Yeah, like uh, Gabe and uh, Nate. Um, yeah, Nate that's basically my it. whole model for making beats is yeah. <laughs> I'll kind of start something and then just he's such a good musician. I'll just be like, yeah, play something on it. That's, that's yeah. all I do every time. <laughs> right. That's what we are, man. We're producers. We just we just bring the completed project to the, to the people. <laughs> yeah. It right. doesn't matter how it got done. You got you yeah. got to bring right. the parties together. That's that's really what a producer is too. Um, so I mean, <laughs> no matter, yeah, like just like you said, no matter how it's done. But uh, yeah, I definitely agree. Um, working with other people uh, definitely fills in for your gaps. Um, so we're at about 15 minutes. So uh, time flew by really fast. But let's go ahead and wrap it up. Does anyone have any uh, other things they want to add before we wrap it up? No, I, I think we're about to wrap. No, go, you go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think just the the overall uh, message is pretty much don't don't worry about it so much and, and yeah. try to take some of the importance out of it and just know, you know what, the next one will be good. Let me just knock this one out or let me just yeah. go the next one. And just remember, you know what, you've made beats before, so it's it's peaks, right. valleys, it's gonna cycle your whole life. Yeah. And just accept it and move. Right. Everyone has different tastes too, and so like, you know, stuff you like. Uh, other people won't like maybe and stuff you don't like other people will love so uh, it's just hard to say you know <laughs> right, music so is it's a little it's a little randomness there <laughs> just keep right, making so i'm just gonna quickly backtrack to what okay. we were saying before about um what was it oh right like in terms of like you know you may have like a folder of unfinished beats you know i was just gonna add to to that um basically if you have like 15 20 unfinished beats in a folder you know the same way like you guys were just talking about collaborations i i think what you can do if you have someone you trust and you're cool with them and you and them have like chemistry and you make they make good music yeah. you can send them those uh unfinished beats because mm -hmm. most of the time or sometimes you may find that they may have a totally different perspective or go down a different line with it and then it, mm -hmm. for you now when you hear it it brings new inspiration and it's like oh, okay well this is a different this you know this is a different vibe i wasn't going for this year but i like it you know so i think yeah. that can also work and just to lastly put it um you know like for me personally what i found with myself you know it, it's all about time management where beat block is concerned because like i said if i stay way too long on a particular project like if i'm trying to find the perfect song the perfect this the perfect that i find i'm gonna lose myself more and more and more and then i'm gonna feel like i i can't produce or i don't know what i'm doing or yeah. Oh, oh, that noise, right. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, you know, if I stay way too long, like, for, I mean, I don't spend this long anymore, but there were times in the past when I was now starting out, I would spend like eight weeks on one track and not get anywhere. So the longer you stay on a track, you know, and it's not progressing and you're, you're not feeling it after a while, you will lose, you know, some kind of momentum and you will start to feel like you're, you know, you're losing it, like how to produce and you have beat blocks. So. Yeah. It's all about yeah, time efficiency, man. managing your time and, you know, just right. finish the track and do a rough thing like Gabe said, you know, just do a yeah. rough thing and then come back to it later. But just Actually, make sure you finish it and then move on and, you know. Right. Actually, I mean, now that, like, we're mentioning all this, I actually just, like, thought about an idea. Like, what, what if there was, like, a, a site where, like, like uh, producers could, like, upload, like, their partially made beats and then other producers could like find them and then like finish them like i wonder spice. if that would be oh, interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff out there like spice is, is, like is there oh really yeah. is there something yeah, like there's that? another one called dub c there's splice that does that but there's not oh, a lot of active I didn't users on there thing. yeah, yeah it's just a matter of getting the, the traffic there that's like the, the platforms yeah. are out there i think but huh. and they do and they do exactly what i was just saying like we're like you yeah like you can literally because splice is optimized to work with like different dolls so you can like upload directly from a doll 
Oh, are you right. gonna look oh, wow. project files? So oh, like, when wow. you actually see the individual stems in on the YAS site when you go, you, if you have like a Reason project or Ableton, well, I mostly see Ableton, but I haven't really dived yeah. into it, but there's oh, wow. like Ableton projects and you see like the entire file session right there. You can just take what you I want and- I didn't know anything it. about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's worth it looking out. up. Yeah, it's nice. Did you know about Gabe or- No, I've never heard oh, of this. Oh, okay, okay, so I don't yeah, feel alone. Cool. <laughs> well, see, we all learn something new every day. So yeah, we do. So or I, every I other mean, day or whatever. Yeah, I mean, we're all learning. You know, so <laughs> exactly. Well, maybe we can get a you know a collaborative project going on there with some sound engineers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know their platform like, is lacking uh, the traffic. You, you could get like a uh, collab with like each one one producer adds like one track each. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> That'd be a fun little concept. I'll add the hats. <laughs> <laughs> that could be um, interesting. Okay. It could be actually. Um, all right. Any uh, any other last thoughts? No, I think that wraps it up for me. Yeah. Okay, that wraps up for me. So, um, yeah, so I guess you guys go ahead and uh, give your little sign-off thing. Tell people who are, give your links and stuff, and then uh, and then we'll call it a day. So right. I guess let's start with, um, I guess, well, I'll, I'll, I guess let's start with Pixel Sashay, because he's the far left on my screen. I don't know about your guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, okay. I can't see. Um, uh, oh. I'm on my phone. I'm on my phone. <laughs> okay, so Sashay. Oh. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, all right, so Pixel Sasha, uh, you can go to my website, pixelsasha.com, and uh, you can join the Facebook group, uh, which is Sondrin Crowd, and um, you can also go to the uh, forum, which is what? Well, the Sondrin, yeah, the Sondrin forum. And yeah, you want to hear any beats, as I said, you know, just go to my website, uh, and that's it for me. Okay, Gabe. So I'm Gabe from the Legion. Our website is legionbeats.com and all of our socials and everything is this is the Legion. So SoundCloud slash this is the Legion, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on Snapchat now, messing around with Snapchat. So come find me on there. This is the Legion. Uh, yeah, everything, YouTube, everything is this is the Legion. Um, yep. And this is James Beats at Bane. Bane. Com. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <I like> that. <laughs> this is Quinlan with Oxygen Beats, and we're signing out. So, till next time, guys. Peace. Peace.